I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're in Tentarium. And what's that? A new logo. And what's that? Is that the subscribe button? Maybe you should press it. Anyway, last time we asked you what would you like to see next and you chose Adventure Time. So in today's episode we'll be making... Wait, what? Our grey smartle would not arrive on time? Robisz bardzo głupią minę? Okay. So instead, we will try to make a completely different doll in a week. Since it seems like it would be impossible, very fittingly, let's make Kim Possible. Some of y'all will probably give me shit for this, but it's crunch time, so cut me some slack. I will be using my own pattern that we already made for Coco, but hear me out. I would love to show you how to style it differently this time. And like, is it forbidden for me to reuse a pattern just because I made it? I don't really have the time to go to the store either, so let's pull something from my fabric collection. Old shirt, very flimsy, lycra or whatever this is, jersey, stretchy, which a bit problematic. I'm gonna interface both of these and then cut this out. After doing just that, I prepared a haiku to make sure I cut the correct pieces. There is light. The light is dark, and some are black. <laughs> Let's try not to lose track. We will be losing a lot of things during the course of this custom, and track is not one of them. <laughs> We're off to a great start, because I already lost a piece of the pattern. So that's great. <sighs> Calm and collected. Calm and collected. God damn it. No, that's not the flap I needed! It's on the other page! <sighs> After I found the pocket, I realized I didn't have any thread in the right color and that it was like Sunday night and I have a day job. So I had to stop there and resume next day after work. With a fresh mind and matching thread, I made myself a fresh bobbin, set everything in place and started by preparing the pocket flaps. There already is a full tutorial for the pants in Coco's video and in the written instructions, so I'll mainly go over the things I added for this rendition. So this time the pocket flaps are a bit more rounded and I added a third color to the mix. I also ended up discarding the back pocket flaps. Yes, the same ones for which I have reprinted the pattern. It's on the other page! I extended the side pocket pattern by a couple of centimeters to add a detail in the middle of the cargo pocket. I first folded the pocket in half, stitched about 5mm from the folded edge, and then pressed the pocket open and the flap onto it. I then top stitched the new folded edges down. I then attached the sides to the pocket and set them aside. I added a similar detail to the new back pockets, which I found utterly cute. It's time for bed! The next day, I continued the construction of the pants. I did the front piecing first, I added the darts, and then added the pockets in the back, which I really didn't like the flap, so I took it off and added the black pockets. Then I did bad magic to connect the backs, added the front, usual pants stuff, and to add some pizzazz, I will attach a zipper to the hem of the shorts. This is purely decorative, so all the hard work can go. I contemplated whether I should make the zipper separate at the side seam, and I was just about to cut it when I realized that this detail would not be impactful enough and only make my job harder, so I simply attached the zipper tape along the bottom. I finished up the shorts with a snap in the back, and we can move on to the pant legs. I wanted to add this brighter zipper to this part, but I only had two small zippers, so I had to make it work somehow. I thought I would be able to keep the zipper pull, but it was looking weird, so I took it off and folded the zipper tape away at the side seams. I was the most scared of the pockets, because I remember that they were the most difficult part of the pattern, but it was a painless success, my guys, and it made me very happy. Overall, this video is sponsored by My Sewing Patterns, so if you like sewing for smart dolls, please check out our shop over at enchantarium.com. 
the Kim Possible cartoon has very stylized designs and I want to mimic that just a little bit in our Kim's head sculpt. I took a free model called Prophecy from the Smart Doll website and started adding changes. Kim has a unique lip shape and a very round face and eyes. I'm not aiming to make this head into a cartoon style, just getting inspired by the most prominent features. Somewhere in the process I closed the third eye, but to be honest, it's not my best work and it's still a little bit visible. Here's the comparison of the original prophecy and our Kim base. Then it's time for printing. With the head we also printed the grappling hook gun and Rufus, naked mole rat pet. Barb says this little rat model was the best six bucks ever spent. <laughs> and I agree. But let's put aside the props and pets and take care of the face. After a sending session and two coats of Mr. Super Clear Sealant, I can start drawing. I don't know how Moonlight Jewel does her gorgeous face-ups on 3D printed dolls, but I find drawing on 3D printed heads very difficult. The texture and density of resin is so weird to me. I'm more used to painting on heads that have a little bit of squishiness in the surface. Two brands that we use the most are Monster High and Smart Doll, and their heads are made out of vinyl. On these dolls you can feel with your pencil how smooth and springy the head is. When I'm satisfied with the watercolor pencil sketch, I can spray the head with MSC and start adding acrylic paints. I want her to have a confident smile, but at the same time I try to incorporate the roundness of her original design. I rarely do this kind of eye shape, I usually go with the pointy cat eye style, but I think a more cartoony shape will do great here. I'm adding a few lashes on top and the bottom and also making the brows more saturated. The eyes are cool, but something was missing here. I just can't leave them so simple, I must decorate. I have to say I was painting the hook gun 10 minutes before this and I had a metallic copper paint mixed, so that's what I'm applying. I was about to paint her lips and then I remembered that this is a 3D printed head and she's not exactly the same color as she should be, like maybe it's not visible on camera, but in real life this one is a little bit too yellow and definitely too saturated, so I will try with white and pink pastel, because I don't want to erase this face up because I really like it. The pastel treatment works alright and after two layers the color looks much better. These two coats of pastels in MSC also helped with blending the eyeshadow. The copper paint was still in front of me, tempting me again, so I'm using it on the upper lip. The original Kim has only this part painted, but I'm going for a more semi-real look, so I added it on the bottom lip too, but in a form of delicate lines, so there's a soft shine. I know that not every redhead has freckles, but I just couldn't stop myself from adding subtle dots to her nose, cheeks and forehead. I sometimes go crazy with white highlights, but on semi-real style heads, I try to keep it natural. And with a layer of Perlex powder, the face is finished. For the top, my initial plan was to do a peekaboo neckline, you know, one of those with a boob hole, and make it into one of those K-pop bodysuits where they have big cutouts on the side, and it looks like they have a wedgie all the time. I made a prototype, which wasn't half bad, but I made the mistake of tweaking it too much without testing and just making a final version. <sighs> I am starting to feel like this might not work out. <laughs> well... Let's see. This is my prototype, which I hope you agree looks decent. And this is the new abomination. I think the problem is that it's not been thought through. Why the prototype worked and this didn't is a mystery to me. And here's what the five stages of grief look like. Stage one, denial. It doesn't look half bad on the camera. Stage two, anger. Except for these puckers. Fuckers. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just so upset because I spent two days on this now and we don't have time. Stage three, bargaining. Do we like it? Do we even like it? Stage four, depression. And finally, stage five, acceptance. No, I don't like it. And the unofficial stage six is an emergency enchantarium meeting. Hola! Hodno. Do dupe wyszło. Bo gówno. 
You can tell I was really pissed off there. I tried to salvage this by making it into a crop top, so I cut off the panty bit and decided to bring back this rare gem. Walolo. Ah yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> it's so dumb. I ripped some seams, hemmed the bottom, and here's the result. It wasn't phenomenal. There was a lot of under boob action going on, and overall, I was again faced with a whirlwind of emotions. The feeling of failure being the strongest amongst them. I was ready to give up. Because I'm not a quitter, we're gonna do something else entirely again. So bear with me. We're gonna try doing this. Let's hope it works, because there's only one hour left of this day. It's 11 p.m. and I need it finished tonight. I was losing it at this point, trying to talk myself through the night. I am cutting things on fold because it's more efficient, right? You only cut half, so it has to like cut my cutting time in half, right? That's how it works, right? I'm not delusional and super tired, right? That's not it. It's science, right? <laughs> I'm not sure if I should be trusted with sharp objects like this at this moment. No, I think that's the one <laughs> I never said. Ah, I couldn't pass up a good that's what she said joke. To save on time, sanity, and for a cleaner look, I did all the hems with hemming tape, so there's no visible stitching. I hemmed the sleeves and the peekaboo edges first. I sewed the shoulder seams and sewed the collar into a loop. It's not my favorite to attach circular things in loops like this in the doll scale, but it lets you have the collar seam in the back, so I did it this time and it wasn't too bad. I then set in the sleeve via movie magic. It doesn't work like that, I have to make it. Or, you know, real labor. And then I sewed the side seams while adding the bottom front piece and referenced this Polish gem of a meme. As you may have noticed, I added some straps hanging from the front and I am now hemming them along with the rest of the bottom. Then I had a panic attack while trying to turn it to the right side. <gasps> no, 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 no. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It was time to check if it was worth staying up. If it's even a 1% improvement, well, I won't be happy, but... Okay, a bit boobylicious. I think it's better. Personal opinion, it's better. I think I'm gonna stitch these down here, like they are meant to be. I wasn't sure about the straps yet, but the time was running out. Bruh. Let's take a break from the clothes and take care of her shoes. Usually, it's Barb that does Smart Doll shoes, but she has already done so much for this doll and I feel like I need to contribute a little bit more. And because I have no experience in proper doll making, sculpting, painting and decorating doesn't count, I decided to do what I'm good at and that means sculpting, painting and decorating. But in this case, it's actually only decorating these basic black boots. I covered the sole in washi tape, I was too lazy to go to Barb's room for her painter's tape and sketched the design I wanted to add. I'm carefully peeling the tape and transferring the design to thick craft foam. Then using uhu, this is how we call it? Yes. Uhu glue, I can place them more or less where they should be. I tried sending the edges with a metal file, but the result was not satisfying, so I did it with a Dremel tool instead. And with this method, I could not only sand it, but also do a decorative edge. I later went back to a metal file to make the shape more defined. We definitely don't need them to be so tall, so the next step is to cut them in half. I painted around the lace holes, but Barb has a different idea for this part. As much as I appreciate the painted eyelets, I have real ones and I want to put more in, because the laces are too long anyway. So I marked some new holes and punched them out. Then with my cropper dial, I added these and laced the boots. I continued to accessorize the outfit by adding a couple of black belts and a buckle, which has such a long closure thingy that I decided to cut it off completely and just glue it on especially because the pants close in the back. 
To finish the front belt loops, I made a couple D-rings with some silver wire by bending it over an X-Acto knife handle and added them to the straps. I wanted to add more texture to the top of the outfit, so I played with some ideas of making a black harness, so that there would be something there but not immediately visible. I did entertain making it green, but the color was not doing it for me. I ended up doing two loops for each arm with a buckle and added some narrower straps in the front and back to tie it together. I finally had to face the shirt straps and I tucked them under the belt this time and decided they might look better if they were shorter, so I added D-rings to them as well and I think they tie the outfit really well. Did you see that one-handed glue action? I added some straps to the side pockets, simply because they were left over from the top, and added some bolts to the pockets to weight the pant legs down. We had some leftover leather from the shoes that were cut off, so I decided to put it to good use and I had an epiphany of a lifetime. You have to be me to, 500 years after we worked with them, realize that this is because art. Oh my god, I am so dumb. <laughs> I wanted to add a sash to the belt, just like Kim has in the cartoon, so I started playing with some eyelets. I don't know why I'm doing this yet. I started by making it in this triangular shape like the original, but the hand stitching was just not the vibe, so I yet again reverted to the Enchantarium website and made the free hip bag, with some different straps to make it work with this outfit. Instead of adding the same strap as some had, I only added one horizontal strap in the back to hook another strap through later. And instead of the strappy closure, I opted out for a snap. I think that will fit the modern vibe we have going for Kim a little bit more. I kept the eyelets on the side because I thought they were a fun little idea and I attached the bag to her belt with a lobster clasp. The bag threw off the balance in the design, so I had to counter the bag diagonally for the doll to be visually balanced. So we decided to add the communicator on her arm. It was a bit too late to do any modeling and 3D printing at this point, so I did it the analog way by cutting out some shapes out of thick craft foam. To make it lay better on the arm, I heated up the foam and bent it. I smoothed out the edges with my nail drill which I don't use the sandpapery bits for, so don't worry, no nail particles were transferred. I painted it black and added the details. Lastly, some arm loops, and I'm sure Alex will do some more magic on these details with paint. The communicator needs a little bit of spicing up, and I'm painting a snowstorm, I mean, TV static noise, on the screen. I added a few details like buttons and painted the edges and it's ready. We used most of our combat glove set on the Totally Spice customs and the only pair that was left were these closed fist ones. I'm painting them grey, nothing fancy, just dry brushing this time. Finally, it's time to make our little friend Rufus look alive. He gets a few coats of light pink, then grey and white for feet, hands, eyes, teeth and whiskers. Now, the part that really made him look alive. Blushing and shading with chalk pastels. I'm adding a layer of red pastel in every crevice and blending it with a slightly lighter tone. On his back, I added some yellow so he's not all pink. Then I wanted to add some definition above the eyes, on the mouth and in a few places on his body so he looks wrinkly, like a real naked mole rat. After that, I gloss his eyes and teeth. The next prop is the grappling hook gun. In the cartoon it's red, but as Barb put it, we had to satisfy it to better match our color palette. I just want her to look more professional and mature than in the cartoon. I'm painting the hook grey and dry brushing it with white. Then the metallic orange that I mentioned in the face-up section. And a brown handle and the hook gun is ready. We almost forgot about the eyes. Barb printed these bases on our FDM 3D printer, so they have a lot of tiny lines. 
to get rid of them, I'm covering the eye with UV resin and curing it for 2 minutes with the power of the sun trapped in this lamp. After that, I painted them white. I designed and printed this iris design, glued it on top and gave them two coats of resin and UV treatment. One of them has a few bubbles, but nobody's eyes are exactly the same, so I'm not really bothered. She looks so good with them. Look at that sassy gaze. One of the reasons we chose this character as a backup plan is that we already have a perfect wig for her. It's a smart doll wig stolen from our interstellar blue prowess doll. The blue doll was a host for two different characters and they both have their own wigs, so this one was kind of free to use. And with the last piece, the doll is ready. Now we only have to do the voiceover and to take pictures and edit the video. And let's not forget a good sushi lunch break. is how she turned out. Kim Possible was on my list of to-do dolls for some time, and with this impossible deadline, she came in a clutch and saved the day as she always does. I'm not gonna say it was easy, because crunch time is never easy, and I know it may seem like a week is a lot of time, and we did manage to make this doll work, but man, we need to start planning for disasters like this. All's well that ends well, I guess. Anyway, please check out our shop over at enchanterium.com if you need a pair of badass pants for your dolls. And if you don't, there's plenty of other patterns to get there as well, including free ones. For those of you who stuck to the end, there is of course a discount code. So use PROBABLE for 20% off. Which doesn't apply to the free patterns because they're already... Well, I guess it does apply because math... Whatever, just go to the website. <laughs> Are you guys Team Kim or Team Shigo? Should we make her too? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we will see you pa -pa -pa -da next time. Bye! Jak to mówi każda polska matka, ale tu syf. Jak by to nazwać na środku? Go England! Oh! <laughs> it's that meme. I don't know it. Sorry.